Tandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. Before our play begins, we would like to take a moment, and I mean just a brief moment, to say something that will help those who have clothes to wash. Our suggestion is that you use White King Granulated Soap. Put White King in your washing machine. If your husband happens to do heavy, dirty work, if his overalls and jumpers and work shirts have made you work and washing trouble, you'll not only like what White King does, you'll say, I love that soap. And your hands, the hands you'd like to keep young and lovely, how kind White King will be to them. The only hands you'll ever have. And listen, save White King box tops. You're going to want them for something you're going to hear about on this program. The moment is up. Now, on with Chandu, the magician. In Alexandria, Egypt, Frank Chandler, known in the Far East as Chandu, his sister Dorothy Regent, and her two children have escaped from an Arab who had locked them in an upper room of his shop. But in a dark alleyway, Dorothy disappears and is presumably lost in the maze of crooked streets. The present act opens in a dimly lighted room far underground. The air is thick with smoke. Seated about on the floor are many men in Arab dress, puffing narghilis. At the far end of the room is a platform on which a group of musicians is seated. Chandu, the magician... What is this place, Uncle Frank? How'd we get here anyway? Bob, remember you promised to ask no questions. Okay. I'll bet these guys sitting around here would fall on their faces if they knew who we were. Well, to them, we're just parents. Boy, they'd never figure out how we got here. Now, Bob, I didn't say we came here by any occult means. Well, it seems as if it were only a minute ago that we were in Yusef's house trying to find out where Mother is. It seems so, to you. But what is the sense of time? No one knows. Sometimes a minute seems like a year. And I've known a year to pass like the shadow of a cloud. You have? Look, Uncle Frank, will you answer me just one question? If I can, without revealing secrets I'm sworn to keep. Okay. Did you see Dad over here anywhere before he was drowned? Or supposed to be? Well, I... I'd seen him sometime before. Why? Because Betty and I figured out that you must know what's in those drawings and things that were stolen from our house. Or why would you be so excited about getting them back? I suspect what they are. I don't know. Well, can't you tell me what you think? I won't tell anybody. I'm sorry, I can't, Bob. Someday you'll understand it all, I hope. If I fail, but I can't fail. Just doesn't bear thinking of. Once we find your mother, I can get on with it. Well, I don't see what makes you think Mom's down here. I don't see any women. I think she is, and I have good reason to think so. You can't ask about her, can you? Say, do you want to understand what those guys are saying? Not yet. But there is one possible way, though. A way to what? To understand them. None of them seem to have the least suspicion we're not exactly what we seem. So now it's time to go further. If I succeed, you'll understand them, too, as though they spoke in English. I want you to understand them so you'll know just what to do, just in case. So just say the word and I'll do it, whatever it is. And listen, be absolutely still. Listen to the psychic summons. That weird sound we heard when... Yes. Pay no attention to what I say, but fix your mind on the sound. If I'm successful, you'll understand the man that's coming out on that platform there. Do you see? Yes, I, I think so. I'll do my best. Oh, Yogi, my teacher, far across the sea, I ask your help. By the hidden secret you have taught me, I call upon you to help me in this hour. Make clear to me and to my helper the unknown tongues. 
poker in that place. I hold in my hand the emerald casket. Hey, Understand what he said. I did. Well, it sounds just like English to me. I thought he said the selling of the dancing girls will begin. He did. And I'm right. The power is mine. Brother. Well, now what? I bring before you a Russia with skin like sin and eyes like strawberries. <laughs> Not exactly. It amounts to the same thing. What do you mean? Well, there's always a market for dancing girls for cafes and so on, all over the Near East. A man like that gathers them up, promises them they'll make a fortune, and then, well, it amounts to selling them. But she's just a kid. Look at her. She looks scared to death. No, Bob, I know how you feel. But it's the way things are done, and we can't change it. We've got to get your mother out of here. Make even a little disturbance, and these fellows will be on us like hornets. Okay. Only, only what if... Whose will she be, this man? Beautiful as the dog. She dances like pomegranate blossoms in the sun. Offer me what you will. One Egyptian pound. Two. Three. Four. Four pounds. to look any older than Betty. Are you really going to let him have her, that, that fat old guy? I tell you, we can't help it, Bob. This goes on all the time. And we've got to find your mother. If for you, my master, is a murderer! <laughs> oh, there is one but me. She is quiet as a dove's wing. She has golden hair. <laughs> and she her tiny feet. And her eyes beyond the archway. It's not part of the street. Come on, Doc. Look, why, where's Bob? Right behind you. See, I couldn't let that fat old droop have her. Have who? That girl, Natasha. I grabbed her away from me. Oh, right oh, come on, Natasha. There comes Abdel, or whatever his name is, and brother, is he mad. <laughs> Can I do anything for you? Who's that girl you brought back with you? Her name's Natasha. That's all I know. Oh, let me get these Arabian clothes off before I do another thing. Here, I'll help you. Ugh. It's a good thing we put them on over our own clothes. Or what would we do? Well, I hope Uncle Frank can send for our things at the hotel. I certainly don't want to wear anything I have on ever again. Poor mother, it must have been awful. Oh, you can't imagine how dirty it was in there. Well, you surely don't think I should have left her in there, Uncle Frank. Well, not as it turned out. But it might have turned out very differently. You know that, don't you? Oh, I guess so. Uncle Frank. In just a minute, dear. Dorothy, do you feel up to telling me what happened? Oh, yes, yeah, Frank, I'm all right now. Who was that little girl? Yes, and where is she now? Downstairs. Yusuf's wife's looking after her. She's a runaway. Well, how'd you find that out, Uncle Frank? I tried to talk to her, and she couldn't understand a word I said. Well, as it happens, I speak her language. Where is she from? She's from the Basque country in the Pyrenees. Uh -huh. She ran away first to be a dancer in a cafe in Biarritz. And then someone told her she could make more money here and redeem the family fortunes. Poor little thing. She doesn't look any older than Betty. And she isn't. What in the world would we do with her, Frank? Well, put her on a boat, send her home. And that reminds me. I'll have to see about our luggage. It's at the railway station. It is. Well, had you forgotten we were going to Cairo this evening? Oh, I'd forgotten it, too. 
Oh, was it only this afternoon we went to that shop? Yes, it was, Mother. I must know what happened to you, Dot. Because we may have to start for Cairo in the morning. Oh, I don't mind talking about it now that it's over. If it is over. Bob, you big goose, she doesn't have to know about that. About what? What's happened now? Nothing that matters now, Dot. Yusuf said you ran away from those two Arabs who pulled you into that doorway. So I did, but of course after I'd turned the first corner, I was hopelessly lost. Those streets. And in mm. those Arabian clothes, too. But how did you get into that underground slave-selling room where we found you? Well, I decided I'd walk into the best-looking cafe I saw and ask for someone who spoke English. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. Oh, that's using the old bean. A huge Arab came up to me at once. Did he understand you, Mom? Yes, he seemed to. But suddenly he said something to another man sitting there on a rug, and that one asked my name. What did you say? Why, I told him, of course. Dorothy. Well, uh, I thought you'd missed me and had sent people looking for me. You spoke the name of Regent in a place like that? Why is it that ever since we've been here, the very name of Regent seems to turn people to stone? Well, did anyone ask you anything about Robert or what you were doing in Egypt? No. Nobody said anything more. The man took me through a doorway and down a long flight of stairs into a room filled with girls, all sitting on the floor. Was Mm. that Natasha there? Yes. The man muttered something that sounded like a curse, and he did say regent then. Then he growled something at the girls and went away. Frank, where are you going? Downstairs to speak to Yusuf for a minute. He must be back by this time. Don't be afraid, Mom. Yusuf's got men all around the house. I don't blame you, Mother. Every time Uncle Frank turns his back, something awful seems to happen. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, dear. I'm just tired. Thank goodness Uncle Frank and Bob got to that place in time. Yes. Now, if I could only get a shower and some clean clothes. Frank, what is it now? You've had a bad time of it, Dorothy, but it's happened for the best, after all. As if it were meant to be. Why? What do you mean? If we hadn't been delayed by all this, we'd have taken the train to Cairo. Yusuf just came back from the station. What of it, Uncle Frank? Just this. Someone set fire to the train half an hour out of Alexandria. It burned to ashes and 40 people were killed. Before our program started this evening, we told you how wonderfully easy... White King made the washing of heavy clothes like overalls and work shirts in your washing machine. I wonder if that might have given you the idea White King was only for the heavy washing you have to do. Why, of course, that isn't so. Say, your finest tablecloths and napkins, your daintiest lingerie, the fragile and lovely things you have to wash. White King Granulated takes care of them safely, gently, And we think as no other soap has ever done. There are reasons, of course, but aren't you kind of tired of hearing reasons all day long? Millions and millions and millions of packages of White King are sold. Each means that some lady has found this soap the one that helps her most. Listen, we say you'll like it. No, we'll say more than that. You'll love White King. Until tomorrow night, when perhaps you have tried White King. Good night. Chandu the Magician is written by Vera Oldham. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.